This is the Free Trader Beowulf. Sadly, I don't actually have room for that ship. So instead, I'm doing the small Rampart Fighter from their Kickstarter campaign. It's currently running. If you're interested in Traveller and you want to get hold of a 3D printable ship, then this is where you need to be. I'll put the link down in the description. And there's late pledges if you do miss the campaign itself. So I 3D printed everything. So first to turn these parts, which I printed, this one's in resin and clear, the rest of them were done in FDM. I need to put them together. They literally just clip together and I'm done. But to add some detail, I use scribing tape. It's the black lined tape there to allow me to put some more depth into some of the lines so that they'll hold the weathering later on. I find with FDM prints, they don't put very deep lines in. They tend to smooth them out a bit and this can square them off. You have to go quite gently, and this is a scribing chisel by Despy. Now I know I said I clipped them together, but I glued them and filled these gaps. They just show a little bit too much on the finished fighter for what I wanted in this diorama. Finally, I smoothed and sanded them a lot. But more about that in a minute when I do all the 3D prints. So now I have the ship decided, but printing that on its own would be really boring for a video. So I decided to do an entire hanger. It's open lock clipped, modular. I designed it myself. First time I've ever designed anything this big. I think it came out all right. But now to make it look like it's alive rather than a pile of 3D prints. And the first thing I need to do is make the 3D prints look a little bit smoother. This is printed in FDM PLA because of the size. Now, I just did a whole video on how to smooth 3D prints, so I'm not gonna go into the process here. I'll link it and you can check it out. But my secret ingredient in that video is what I used on all of these, spray putty. A few thin coats from each direction soon sorts out most of the layer lines, but sometimes my bottom layers or other areas aren't as smooth as they could be and I need to fill some gaps. And for that, I'm using Tamiya putty. It's the basic putty with an orange cap and you have to thin it with acetone, hence the mask you saw. It goes on very nicely. It does shrink as it dries, but it sands beautifully, which is why I'm using it. I do recommend wet sanding to keep the dust down. It's really noxious stuff. And you'll get a beautifully smooth surface with both of these. My base color is white. So I took everything outside and sprayed it with Army Painter White Primer. Apart from the edges of the diorama that are just neat facings, they went black. I didn't bother painting the bits you wouldn't see. So all I had to do now was use the open lock clips to clip everything together. These work really well. You can take things apart and put them together as many times as you like. The only downside of the clip system is that the clips are quite chunky, which means your walls can be a bit thick. So I made these little mini clips. They're 60% of the size, and so my wall can be 60% of the width. And for any pieces that are just gonna be sat and gravity will hold them down, I use these little wedges. They're a mini clip on one side, a wedge on the other, and gravity does most of the rest of the work. It was while I was putting the gantry onto the wall sections, I realized, oops, hadn't painted the underneath. So they had to wait for later. But other than that, pretty soon I had a completed hanger. The next morning, I just popped in my gantries. One of the trickiest bits was putting these railings on. They're just push fit, but by this point I've spray puttied and painted them so they're just a little bit big. And there's no real lining up, you just push them into they look good by eye. But they're a bit hard to see in white, aren't they? So let's take those white pieces off again and make them look a bit snazzier. I'm hand painting Vallejo primary colours mostly onto the pipes, the railings, and the warning markings. I do wish I had painted the black into the gaps here. I thought the wash would fill it, but actually it didn't. Big dioramas take a lot of time in painting, but soon I was onto the weathering stage. I started using a sponge to chip and then just use white paint to take out any that looked a bit excessive. It's easy to get carried away with sponge chipping. I did the details like the ladders too, representing the worn areas. This layout is interesting. I did it before I'd printed the people. 
it looks way too chunky when the people are in there. And I think because the Rampart Fighter is the size it is, I scaled it off that, forgetting how small the people would be. So with the base coats on, I reassembled it again. But that was only the first step. I've got two more to come. And next, an oil wash. I'm using this oil paint that I put on card to leach some of the oil out to make it dry more quickly and it's thinned with odourless white spirit thinners. Now the colour was the aptly named Starship Filth and I didn't need anywhere near that amount of oil paint. So I just diluted it out into a thin wash and splushed it everywhere. Technical term. I used a little bit of thicker oil paint to just highlight some of those black warning areas and to put some stains on the floor and left it over the weekend to dry. But sadly, washes don't always dry the way you want them to. It isn't totally fixed, but I went over it with just a little bit more white spirit and a cotton bud and eased up on that very bizarre texture that came out. The next stage was to edge highlight. I'm not really a fan of edge highlighting for figures, but in this case, everything was looking a bit bland and dead and I needed to give it some life. So I used a brush to catch the raised surfaces and corners with a lighter color. Now this did two things. One, it toned down my bright primaries that to be honest, I was finding a little too bright. Much as I like the idea of red pipes and yellow edges, they look too garish against the white. And on the pipes, I also used it to add some subtle, or not so subtle, streaking. I should have done this before I put them in place because it was quite hard to reach in some areas and I did make a bit of a mess at places. And finally, I promise, I dusted everything up with some pigments. I love the effect that pigments give. It just gives a slightly better texture, slightly more chalky, a little bit more dusty. Whether a working fighter ship would have this much dust and dirt, well, that's for you to decide. But I think this army navy is hard up against it and hasn't got as much time to clean as it might normally have. Then I brushed off the excess and sealed it. Now, if you're playing on this, you will want to use a varnish, but it will get rid of your lighter colors quite a bit, which on a white isn't really a problem. I'm just using isopropyl alcohol and water because it's going to be a diorama for me. It's not really going to be handled. And so I didn't need to spray any noxious varnishes and it was raining outside. The very last thing I did was use some ammo engine oil. It's a glossy varnish to create just some patches of a different shine. Just a little bit extra detailing really. And then it was time to get onto the details. I basically spray puttied and painted them just like the previous hanger. So I'm not really going to go into that in any detail, but this time I used the airbrush rather than a rattle can. The rampart is intermediate blue, the sled is black and everything else is painted in the hanger colors. I did pick out some of the details with a Molotow chrome pen and spent a lot of time painting missiles that you hardly see for the rack. I used isopropyl alcohol to loosen up the hot glue. It's it, brilliant at getting rid of it. And then I used a knife to help prise it off and put some war damage onto my fighter, which was great for the weathering. I used a Tamiya dark gray enamel wash to bring out some of the details and then left it overnight and went over it finally with an oil wash and a bit more enamel wash just to give it a little bit of variety. It was looking a bit plain, to be honest. A quick note on the sled. If you randomize the seam on the wheels when you're printing it in FDM, they're more likely to go round. I've got a little ridge where the seam is and they're not really round anymore. And just when you think you're there, it's time to paint figures for two days. These are print minis. I got them from my mini factory and they're pioneers, space station crew and distillery workers for some reason. They look cool. They're all slightly different patterns and sculpts, but I painted them the same so they'd look cohesive. I started with Army Painter White Primer and then Army Painter Speed Paints in orange and flesh tones. I used some of their browns for doing some darker skin tones. But in my experience, Speed Paints can only take you so far. So then I moved on to just normal Vallejo paints and picked out the areas I wanted to be a bit denser. I also went over the orange with a highlight because I find the Speed Paints a little bit too translucent looking. I like them to look a little bit more solid. Bit of hair, few finishing touches, 
I was done. That's it. Remember, subscribe, hit the bell button, join me on Patreon or a channel member if you want to. See you next time.